-hmm. Brothers and sisters, we're going to sing two verses of Come Holy Ghost. Come Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made, to fill the hearts which thou hast made. O comforter, to thee we cry, Thou heavenly gift of God most high, Thou font of life and fire of love and sweet anointing from above and sweet anointing from above. And brothers and sisters, let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And brothers and sisters, as we begin this holy mass, let us turn to the Lord with sincere hearts. And as we've said before, we may be worshiping online, but Jesus is still right by our side. So let us turn to him to prepare us for these holy mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that celebrating the mysteries of the Lord's resurrection, we may merit to receive the joy of our redemption through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who had been scattered by the persecution that arose because of Stephen went as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but Jews. There were some Cypriots and Cyrenians among them, however, who came to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks as well, proclaiming the Lord Jesus Christ. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart. For he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And a large number of people was added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year, they met with the church and taught a large number of people. And it was in Antioch that the uh, disciples were first called Christians. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial, all you nations praise the Lord. All, all you nations praise, praise the Lord. Lord. His foundation upon the holy mountains the Lord loves the gates of Zion more than any dwelling of Jacob. 
Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. All you nations praise the Lord. I tell of Egypt and Babylon, among those who know the Lord, of Philistia, Tyre, Ethiopia. This man was born there. And of Zion, they shall say, one and all were born in her, and he who has established her is the Most High Lord. All you nations praise the Lord. They shall note when the peoples are enrolled, this man was born there, and all shall sing in their festive dance. My home is within you. All you nations praise the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And my brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. The feast of the dedication was taking place in Jerusalem. It was winter. And Jesus walked about in the temple area on the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you when you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hope you all doing well today. Anyone who's watching our Mass through the link with the Archdiocese they listed today, uh, welcome to Holy Family Church. It's thinking about Jesus uh, on Sunday, called himself the Good Shepherd, and his sheep know his voice. And we have the same, a different reading today, but again, Jesus is, again, uh, defining himself as a shepherd who leads his sheep, and his sheep know his voice. Um, my grandparents out in Arkansas, they had a sheep farm for a while. They switched to cattle because the sheep had a hard time taking care of themselves. They're always having troubles. And cattle, you just kind of let it sit and give them water and keep them in a field and they're in inoculation once a year, and they're fine. So I think that's a, it's a good uh, metaphor for us. I know someone like myself, I know. Uh, I need a guide. I need someone to help me get through, and I'm so glad we have our uh, Savior Jesus in our, in our faith. But, you know, sometimes, I think as, as, a, as a priest working in a parish, you really see the dynamic of how people sometimes really hear the voice of the shepherd and how, and how sometimes they don't, and they struggle with it. Uh, and that was brought home to me. Recently, I talked to a, uh, someone who just chatted with me over the phone about how they had had some real, real challenges in their life during this time of quarantine. And recently they had watched a religious service online and started praying again for the first time in a while. They're just the, all the issues involved with the quarantine had really gotten to them. And they just said how for the first time in a few weeks they had really prayed and really talked to God in their heart. So I think there's always issues that we have to face. I, I think a lot of people know I've uh, 
mentioned this story before, a fella I knew at a previous assignment in a nursing home who had finished medical school at the age of 27, was, had a fiance, was gonna get married, and then he had a massive stroke and was bedridden. And when I met him, he was probably in his late 50s and never did marry. Everything had changed for him through that massive stroke. And still, he was filled with joy. And there were three different ministers from my town. Uh, one was Mennonite, I remember, uh, who would stop by his room every week to get reflections about the scriptures because they felt like he was such a great resource. He had such great insights about the Christian faith. Always laughing, always filled with joy. And one time he said to me, he said, Father, for the first five years after my stroke, I was in a very dark place. And then he said, I realized I just couldn't stay there any longer. And he started to focus on what he was thankful for. So I do think sometimes to hear the voice of the shepherd, we have to adjust to what has happened in our life, whether it's quarantine or an illness. I know for me, uh, it can be the small thing sometimes. When I was uh, younger, starting when I was 16, I always sang at Mass. I was always in a music group. High school, all through college, uh, after college, and uh, I was an architect in uh, D.C., I sang, I always sang at Mass. And then I went to seminary in 1990, and I did join a choir, but they only sang once in a while. And I remember it, I missed having that, that participation in the liturgy. I'd done that for so long, and music was sort of how I got involved in church. I remember once when I was in uh, college, I was home at my home parish in Virginia, and we did a song called 40, which is uh, very, it's based on the 40th Psalm. It's very, very slow and respectful song, but it was written by the band U2. And my pastor, who was Irish, walks up and says, that sounded like an old Irish tune. And we said, yes, because <laughs> U2's from Ireland. But anyways, sometimes we just have to adjust. I know as a, as a priest, uh, I, I've learned to see Christ in many different ways because you're in so many different assignments and you meet all kinds of different people but for all of us, I guess the thought today is, what is it that I need to adjust to? Maybe I need to change how I pray. Maybe I'm just not enthused by my prayer life. Perhaps I need a project, like I'm going to read through a book of the Bible, or I'm going to take more time for silence, or I'm going to read up on the saints. If you feel like your prayer life is not real dynamic, you know, what, do you, what can you do, especially during this time of quarantine, to hear the voice of the shepherd better in your prayer? And if you're feeling a blockage, you know, like that fella from Walkersville who had that stroke, he had that blockage and he, he needed to get over it. Or the, the person I talked to the other day on the phone who had some challenges during quarantine and had a blockage, how do we get over that? Let's remember to keep praying on these issues, to know that the shepherd is speaking to us, whether we need to change how we're praying, whether we need to think on what we're, well, th what we're thankful for, whatever it is. Let's work on hearing the voice of the shepherd in our lives, because he is speaking. And let us stand and offer our prayers. And our friend Lynn is going to lead the prayers into each of the prayers that uh, she offers. Let's respond. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of the church, make Christ guide them in shepherding their people with a spirit of love, compassion, and solidarity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our national and local leaders, may God grant them wisdom in carefully addressing problems that face their communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick, the homebound, and the lonely, may God bring them comfort love and healing let us pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for this faith community may the lord in his favor grant us strength in remaining faithful to him let us pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for all those who have died in the light of christ may they be welcomed into the heavenly banquet let us pray to the lord lord hear our prayer and for all those prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, 
and lift up to the Lord. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And we ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God. God forever. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the, the praise and glory of his name, name, for our good and the good of all his, his holy, holy church. church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And you are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross, but before his arms were outstretched, 
between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body. which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine And once more, giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, For by your cross cross and resurrection, you have have set set us free. free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among saints, in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, with Hilary and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. And we remember Ephraim Perez in a very special way at this Mass this morning. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And, forever. and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, you take away, away the sins, sins of the world, world. Have, have mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant, grant us, us peace. peace. <laughs> and my brothers and sisters, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. At this time, we have a long tradition in our church of when we cannot physically receive the Lord Jesus in Holy Communion at Mass that we ask for a spiritual communion with him. So let's do that now. We're gonna ask Jesus into our hearts for a spiritual communion. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament of the mass. While I cannot receive you at this time, I ask you now to enter into my heart for a spiritual communion. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we were talking about people a little bit under stress during this time of quarantine and still needing to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. We are having a program tonight at 7, and we have uh, thoughts from a number of parishioners that I'll be reading, and also we have a young adult from the parish who's going to share her thoughts about growing in faith during the time of quarantine. Believe it or not, there's a study that just came out done by a Catholic university in the, in the country. 62% uh, of Catholics say their faith has gotten stronger during this time of quarantine. 
um, and then a certain percentage said it stayed the same, but a pretty strong majority said they've grown in faith. That doesn't mean we're not facing challenges, though, brothers and sisters, so we're going to pray about that tonight at 7, about a half-hour-long program, live stream, 7 to 7.30 tonight. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass has ended. Let us go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.